that's where most people's minds are. They, they, they crap all over themselves. Your mindset is in the sewer. I am, I'm a product of the Evan Carmichael School of Life. If you're unwilling to share the backstory, then I'm not willing to listen to your strategies. What you went through is a recipe for other people to go through. That's the worst thing to do on an audio <laughs> podcast, is put sausage in your mouth. Welcome everyone to the Something to Prove podcast with Mark Drager and Evan Carmichael. This is going to be a nice, tight, what, what do comedians call it, a tight five? We're going to do a, a nice, tight episode because we are here at TDS, Toronto Dance Salsa, for Evan Carmichael's three-day uh, Turn Yourself into a Billionaire event. I think, is that the official title? No. <laughs> What's the event called? I don't even know. Me neither. <laughs> okay, we are at the Turn Yourself into a Thought Leader event. Is that better? Closer. Okay, and we only have uh, until 1.55 p.m., so we are going to... We're, listen, we're not going to rush through it. We're just going to make it a tight 32-minute episode. It's already not tight. It was great. Dude, dude, you are so about, like, you want to be on it, on it, on it all the I time. I am. I'm waiting, I'm waiting guess, to go. We haven't what? said anything yet. Let's guess, go. Guess what? Mm -hmm. Podcasts, mm -hmm. they're about hanging out. They're about... They're about talking. They're about spending time with people, about becoming friends with people. I'm giving you time to eat your spinach salad. And, as, and I, I have sausages in my hand because Nina like hands these to me as we walk in to record a podcast. I don't mm -hmm. know when I'm going to eat this, this meat. But uh, anyway, how you doing, Evan? I'm good. You're good? Yep. You're fired up because you spent the last uh, day and a half helping take entrepreneurs to the next level? Yeah, exactly. Excellent. So we are going to keep time to get to your questions, uh, but we're not going to spend too much time chit-chatting. We're going to get right to today's topic. Did you prepare? I did prepare. Oh, cool. Because I've spent the last day and a half preparing, thinking from getting yelled at by Evan Carmichael Why? in a nice way. Well, because you've been telling us that we need to bring more vulnerability. Oh, okay. We need to bring more purpose. Okay. We need to put ourselves out there. Okay. And so that's what I want to talk to you about. Oh, Cool. I want to talk to you about it because I've spent the last day and a half in this zone, and mm -hmm. I'm about to spend the next day and a half in this zone. Yep. So Evan does this three-day workshop where it's really it's a it's a small group. There's what 15 of us. Mm -hmm. uh, people have flown in from uh, all over America. We have people from Europe. Uh, I drove 35 minutes to get here, so that's like one of the furthest that who, who's had to come. Uh, but uh, but we're all people who want to be thought leaders. Mm -hmm. Like we want to, but we're afraid to. We, we think we have something to say, but we have a fear of judgment. Um, we think we can help people, and secretly, like, our ego says we want to be up front, and we want people to learn from us, we want to write books and become speakers and get paid for it, but we, but we think we don't know how to do it because we're worried about Instagram and YouTube and structure and stuff. So we come here for Evan to teach us. But what you start with is, is vulnerability and putting yourself out there and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, why is that the place to start? Well, are you going to share what you shared, or not yet? <laughs> that's that's vulnerability in in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to share up for sure. I'm eating. A... <laughs> that's the worst thing to do on an audio <laughs> podcast. Just put sausage in your mouth. Okay. Not not just put like stuff his face. How much did you put in there? <laughs> like little bites, dude. <laughs> I expected you to start talking for five minutes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> The man shoves half of a giant sausage stick in his face. <laughs> Sorry. You gotta be... Listen, podcast is about banter. It's about the back and forth. It's not about one person talks for five I minutes. I thought you were going to start talking for five minutes, so I thought, let me jam this in my that's, face right that's now. That's not how podcasts work, Mark. <laughs> Let's talk... Let me... <laughs> yeah, so are you going to share your story? Just I want to lay the groundwork, provide some context. If you want to be a thought leader, mm -hmm. and you're not with us for these three days... Mm -hmm. Why is it that where you start in teaching us stuff? Why do you start there? Did I start there? I'm trying I to think how like I started, did, but maybe I just reverse engineer this in my head. It could be. Well, people knowing your story is important because if you come off as perfect, if you come off as just having it all figured out, then they feel like I can't relate to that person. Like you don't know what I'm going through. Yeah, easy for you. You were born into X, Y, Z. You don't know. You don't know me. You don't know what I'm going through. Where chances are, what you've gone through is actually way worse than what most of the people watching you are going through. And so if you're unwilling to share the backstory, then I'm not willing to listen to your strategies. I think people default to talking about, you got to do one, two, three. Here are the strategies to do it. But until they make a connection to you, 
as an entrepreneur, as a thought leader, then they're not going to take advice from you because they don't feel like you understand them. And so your job, number one, is to share your story, to have powerful opinions, to make me feel emotionally connected to you, that you get me and that I bought into you, and then I'm going to listen to the advice you're going to give me. Yeah. Nice. That's it. Little bite, little little bite. pepper bite, little pepper bite. Just can still eat. banter. Excellent. Not going to shove an entire <laughs> sausage stick in my face because I don't know where it's going to go. Maybe Mark's going to go on this giant rant, and I'll just slowly, you know, I think it's probably better digestion too, Mark. To be honest, to take little bites. But if Mark goes on some giant tirade and takes over the rest of the podcast, then I'll just slowly snack away my salad. I'm good with that. Mark has good things to say. He's a thought leader now. Wow. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I trained it, so. <laughs> I am I'm a product of the Evan Carmichael School of Life. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but I'm still not there yet. Uh, you know, we've been working through sharing our vulnerabilities, and for me, I struggle in two ways. One, I go, what does this have to do with business? Right? Really? Is when it's legit? me, when it's me, Is yes. This legit? Okay. Yes. Is this when it's me, I feel, I feel, no, okay. no, no. Okay. When it's me, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm being melodramatic. Like, I texted you the other day about the fact that I was feeling like sad whiner, and, and depressed. Mm-hmm. And you're like, post. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like no. Like, I don't want to just come across all the time as being needy. It's not just. And it's not all the time. You're not, you're not always whiny and needy. <laughs> I spend a lot of time being whiny and needy. <laughs> I've witnessed, as of you, dear podcast audience of ours, you've witnessed a non-whiny, needy Mark Jager. So it's not all the time. It's just in your head that you think it's all the time. Okay. Yeah. So so, fix that. so part of me goes like, you know, if I share this, um, when I so so we sat down this morning, and six people went around and shared. Uh, they they kind of confessed something that they haven't really shared with too many people before, and we were in a safe space. How was it? Was it emotional? It was very emotional, and I felt so much empathy, mm. and I felt You're good at that. so much compassion. Mark's good at that. For the well, thank you for the people who were speaking, and then when it came to my turn, I just felt melodramatic. I struggle with that. Feeling melodramatic? No, no, no. With well, the empathy. Well, I, I, as people are telling their story, but the suffering, I'm like, this, this is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Like, man, that what you suffered through is amazing because now you're going to do so many amazing, amazing things. So I have to, because that's how I talk to myself so much, I have to watch it. Because you're busy smiling at them. Yeah, and, 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 and sometimes I'm even saying, well, if it's that bad where they're breaking down in tears, I'll, I'll, like, I'll be more um, understanding and empathetic. But as they're telling their stories often about hardships, if, if they're not crying or like on the verge of it, I'm, I might even be saying a lot like, oh my God, that's the best. Oh, that's so good. Right? And then it causes confusion. And they have to explain what that means to people who aren't as familiar with my stuff. So you want to know something weird? So we're in this group and both Lily mm-hmm. and Nina, mm-hmm. when they were sharing, asked me to stop looking at them. They said that I was looking, that I was, because I was looking them in the eye. When people speak to me, I look at them How are you the looking? Eye. Like this? I was looking at them. Oh, hold on. Let's get ready. Ready? Yeah. Like this. It's a little intimidating. I, I'm being sympathetic. Like, look at my face. Look at my eyebrows. Like, now, now like, they're raised, but I think your resting face is maybe a little serial killer. I've been told my resting face is serial killer. Rest, but, I don't want to say but, serial killer, no, but, but well, intimidating. I would go intimidating. But they weren't. In, in, maybe they were intimidated. They, anyway, both of them how, said. How far away were you from them? Were you right next? I to them? I was sitting beside Nina, and yeah. she just said that if I continued to look at her, I would make her cry, because oh. I was looking her in the eye or something. But anyway, so I felt so much empathy for everyone mm-hmm. with such um, meaningful. And and uh, like just stories that I feel like I could totally see how this how this turns you into the person who is ready to help other people. Mm-hmm. And then my own just feels melodramatic. It feels over the top. It feels mm-hmm. it, it's like like okay, I get I can see others. I can see how like I can see how your story makes sense and all these things. But mm-hmm. but mine just feels um, I don't know, like I'm not doing it right. So. So, I mean, that's the first struggle I have is when you're sharing this. And then the second thing is I think naturally you'll say, like, hey, I want to be the world's greatest barber. What does, you know, the neighborhood I grew up in have anything to do with it or the household I grew up in or anything like that? I think, I think we think this. 
You're shaking your head now because you're like, to you it's so clear. To no, you but, it's so but, obvious. Wait, but to you that's not clear? I could, listen, I'm a marketer, so I can say, oh, the place you grew up in maybe you only took refuge from certain male figures or certain yeah, things. Yeah, but and to then yourself, you're expressing to yourself. yourself. This is what you're talking about yourself. But to myself, that's when I start to go like, okay, let, you know, you're, you're BSing everyone. Don't, don't spin it, Mark. Don't spin it, Mark. That's what I tell myself. This is the ultimate power. What are you smiling about? You gave yourself goosebumps? <laughs> no, like when, when, you, when you learn to do the things that you say is when you win. Explain that again for me. You're telling other people mm -hmm. to do these things, mm -hmm. but you're not doing them yourself. So when you learn to do the things that because, you say... Because the path is clear when I'm looking at other people. And when I'm looking at it myself, it's it's muddy and muddled, and that's the reason people hire me. They, you're they hire me because they can't figure it out themselves. No, cause, I can cause help them. You're unwilling to look yourself in the face. In the face. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> you, you're unwilling to face what's actually in the mirror. So you'll just speak out against other people and tell them their truth because you're unwilling to do it yourself. So that that's when you get your ultimate power. It's like, I, I'm going to do this for myself. So, so this morning we worked through the exercise of developing our foundational story. Mm. We You're start a good one. with. I learned something new about Mark. It's great. You. So we start with, you know, I'm Mark Drager, and I know that we all have something to prove, right? Name and statement. And then we get into some reasoning why and some backstory why and all of these things why. Um, I just, I, I shared, I, I pulled stories from my past, but that was only, I shared two or three stories that out of a hundred I could have pulled mm -hmm. because. They all kind of seem crazy. I picked the ones that I thought would have the biggest impact, but you know, I right. don't. I don't feel like. So, so I shared a story about the fact that the reason why I think everyone has something to prove is because um, I've never felt good enough. So I just, I, I feel like I, I was raised in a home. I was raised in an angry home. I was raised in a home with, um, you know, a stepfather who um, has his own issues, his mental health issues, and is alcoholic. Um, and all of these things, and so I was uh, the only way that I that I could drive value or be seen as even being good enough to be willing, like to be able to live in that home. Like I had to earn my right to live in that home, was by like problem solving, working really hard, keeping quiet, not not you know um, raising any issues. Just like just like s just drive as much value and sneak by. Wow. Uh, when was the first it. time you told the, your stepfather story? Which part of it? It's the fact that, like, it wasn't a good household mm. publicly. Maybe when I wrote MarkDrager.com, which was only in February. So this is May, so mm -hmm. March, April, May, three months. Mm -hmm. is, is it, was it hard the first time? To, to talk about my stepfather? Um, well, I, and the impact, I mean, that I had on you. The hardest part is that um, I don't have a relationship with him. I do not like the person. I don't think... Uh, you know, he hasn't done anything to, to earn forgiveness or whatever. But, but more than anything, it's um, I, had, I sat down with my mom and I said, I'm going to start talking about this a lot more mm -hmm. publicly. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. Really, Are they still together? No. Okay. I'm not really asking for your permission, but I'm giving you a heads up that I know your truth and I know why you did what you did, and and I have always seen you as a victim and not an enabler. What you say? But other people will see you as an enabler. Did you get blessing? Yeah. Or did she give blessing? Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. She said. And you asked awesome. her. You asked her before she, you posted to Mark Trigger your no. website. No, no. Oh, no. you posted the website first, and then you said. But I mean, nobody was. It wasn't a. No. Yeah. I asked her. To, I said, read it. Let me know if you. She's a writer. She's a poet. Right. She's right, written right, right, her right. own memoirs, which which she sent me then after I asked her, and I'm 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 reading through them, hmm. and they have like really revealing things. So so create more connection. Look at that. Yeah. She was really the happy. vulnerability created more connection of between the mother and the son. Of course, wow. My mom. But oh, it only works with your mom, I guess. It doesn't work with the audience. The, ch the challenge I face is, is authenticity has different levels. And so I believe, I believe in this enough that I'm here for three days and I want to do this and I want to be good at it. Um, I just don't know if I'm doing it right. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. How do you know if you're doing it the right way? How do you know if you're doing vulnerability the right way? Um... You're you're nervous to do it. That's a good starting point. So if you're so I ask you like, were you afraid to share the stepfather story the first time you did it? Because now you've said it so so many times. Not like every day, but you, you've said that yeah, story said multiple it eight times, or ten right? Times, yeah. Um, 
it's easier now. Mm -hmm. I, you can still connect back to it. You can still imagine the situations and feel the pain, but sharing it is easier than the first time. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to share this crazy thing. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the, the harder thing for me is to go is to go. You know, I am. I, I was raised in uh, like an upper middle class family. I'm a white guy in my 30s. You know, and even though I faced my challenges in, in the in the household I grew up in, all those things, I, I really at the end of the day don't have that much to complain about. So being able to dig into like the vulnerability of your past and your foundation and where you came Nobody from. Nobody wants to hear you complain. But it feels like complaining. Well, that's the problem. Okay. Did you did you have suffering? I, did you have pain? I, yeah. Great. So you're sharing your pain and how you got through it, and that's a lesson to other people who are currently going through that pain. You're not complaining. Who wants to hear you complain? Don't complain. Jesus. <laughs> Who wants to hear just somebody complain? I know. Get me through it. Help me. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot so, of people who deal with abusive parents mm -hmm. or step-parents. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who deal with monsters in their family. Or they, they have to. They don't know how to deal with it. Some people have no answers. Like You figured your way through it. You, you survived, you developed strategies as, uh, you know... Coping methods. Yeah, just, you're not going to leave the home at eight years old, or I don't know, I don't know how old you were, but... Yeah, I was seven when they got married. Like, you, you, you're I not going to... at 16. I mean, but that's maybe the earliest. Like, are you going to move at 12? No. So, you you survived. You developed survival skills from seven until 16, and then as soon as you are able, you left. Mm -hmm. Great, but, like, the, what were the skills you developed? How did you then decide to move out at 16? How did you get emotionally comfortable with doing that? What were the steps? Did you, did you get a job? How did you find a place? Like all of these things, what you went through is a recipe for other people to go through. You can help people. There's people who don't know what to do. They're not as smart as you. They didn't have as much fortune as you did to, to figure out the path. You kind of just figured it out. Or maybe somebody gave you bits of advice and, and, and guided you, right? Like you could be that person for other people. They don't know where to go. They, they pull up Instagram and they see Mark Drager. It's like, this guy went through what I'm going through right now. You're not complaining. You're saving. This is what you teach other people to do. As a marketer, this is what, this is what you're going to tell your clients to do. As a human, this is what, like if, if you're in your church group and people are talking about these things, you're going to coach them, encourage them, and see the potential in them, and, and see the ability for them to get through it. Mm -hmm. Even even sitting with Nina and, and Lily, even though you're scaring their faces off, in your mind is <laughs> By still looking thinking, them in the eye. <laughs> in your mind is still like, man, I love these people. They're going to grow. You see the potential, right? You need to do that for yourself. I'm not complaining, but you default to, like, when it's you, that it sucks. When it's everybody else, it's amazing. Not, not that it sucks. That, that like, you're literally I'm whining and complaining and being mm. melodramatic and like no, and you're yeah. saving, you're saving. So, so you, you need to then tell people how to get out of it. There's hope. Here's what you need to do. I made it through. You can too. You're providing a beacon of hope for other people. And then it becomes your job, your responsibility, to not quench the spirit and do it. You yeah, guys okay. just need to watch, for all of our audio listeners, I'm, I'm sorry you can't see this, but when Evan is proud of himself, he gives a look into the camera, it takes a little pause of beat, his eyebrows go up, and he does this little, like, smile, like, yes, I just said that. I think you need that. I think that recognizing in me, you need to do for yourself. I think, I think when you say something great, you should feel proud of yourself. I... I think you should. I have it in certain situations. No, like, you know, I think what, you should revel in it. What, what recognize I, that what it's I've amazing. Learned. That it's not egotistical. That it's amazing. Well, so so I'm going to work through this. Like, okay, so I'm. Oh, I'm you already I'm, got, I'm, dude, I'm, you're I'm, already way better, dude. Compared to where you were, you're already way better. You're already working through it. Where was I? Like everyone else. So, t so where was I before? In a, in a tank in the sewer, swimming with crap. Yeah. What does that mean? That's where most people's minds are. They, they, they crap all over themselves. Your mindset is in the sewer. Huh. You think you suck. You think you're complaining. You think your thing isn't good enough. I, I, I live there all the time. Yep. On Monday, we have a, we have a holiday here in Canada. Oh. Monday was Victoria Day. My birthday. Evan's birthday. Uh, you were sleepy and tired and doing all these fun things. You, you barely got back from New York. You oh, slept yeah. in the car, dude. You slept on a backpack and made yourself proud. Yeah, yeah, that was the best. <laughs> 
I was but, so happy with that. But for me, I was... Did you uh, see the lines on my face? I did. Oh my god, I was so happy with that. So a little backstory, again, to provide some context. Evan went to New York for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to tell your story for you, or do you want to own your own story? I'll let you tell. You're a good story. Okay, great. So Evan decides, uh, it's Sunday afternoon, his flight is back for 8 p.m. You don't. You said you don't have much to do, so you get there to the airport at 2 in the afternoon, right? 2 to 6... Or sorry, two to eight is six hours. Not that much time to spend at an airport in a lounge. This guy flies very nicely, so he gets the lounge. Yeah, the lounge is nice. Uh, it turns nice. out there are thunderstorms in Toronto, uh, even though it's sunny. I'm, Nina's texting me and saying, like, I don't know why my flight is delayed. And I said, well, there's thunderstorms here. So, what, one in the morning your flight gets canceled? Yeah, 12.30. 12.30, by 2 a.m., you have a rental car, and you decide you're going to drive back to Canada from New York. Yep. Well, because, all I mean, all the hotels are fully booked out. Uh, the flights, they told us that our next flight out was Thursday. <laughs> Unacceptable. It was Sunday, right? Like, I missed my, my whole event. Like, hey, Mark, you're leading it. Like, th- this, is not, this is not happening. So we, get, we rent the car, but anyway, the LaGuardia to get to the car rental spots is a nightmare. So we get a car, too. I say, you know what? I'm just going to keep, I'm going to drive until, until I'm tired. Until you're tired in the face. Yeah, and, and it's... Uh, nine hours? It's nine hours, but that, the first stretch is, is just dark. Like, you're going through the hills, there's no overhead lights, and so it's dark. And the night before, I only slept three hours, so I was already, like, kind of getting tired. Why did you only sleep three hours the night before? Because you were so fired up about something? Yeah. 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 I was super excited. <laughs> <laughs> and I got out of bed, um, and then I worked until 4.30 or something, then woke up at, three, at 7.30. Yeah, that wasn't healthy. So two nights in a row... With no, potentially no sleep. So four thirty, it starts to get. I'm starting to get a little tired. Nina wakes up and says, like, "Hey, think? you should, you should." Like, you should we three hours over. and forty eight hours. Yeah. So, so we pull over to a, a bus stop, and uh, just decide to like crash in the. There's no, there's no motel or hotel, anything. So it's just bus stop. So we pull over, decide to lie down in the back seat. I don't have a uh, mole. I had a, I had a sweater as a potential pillow, but I gave it to Nina to sleep on. So I slept on my backpack. And then at 7, this was 4.30 in the morning, 7.30 in the morning, we hear bang, 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 bang. you got to move the car. i got a delivery coming in. So, like, whoever owns a bus stop or whatever, kick this out. You know, okay, move the car, go go to the bathroom. And um, and I'm filming content of me, like, hey, I, you know, I woke up, 7.30, going to go back home. And then I go to the bathroom, and I, and I wash my hands, and then I see this giant, like, multiple lines on my face because I slept <laughs> on the zipper, right? Like, I'm sitting on a backpack, and I, I commit to that sleep, you know? Like, I'm fully in, squished in against the backpack, um, and then I get so excited, like, oh my gosh, look at this, <laughs> this is the best birthday ever. So I film it, walking back to the car, I had to rush back to meet Dave Meltzer, because he was in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Dave Meltzer, fan of the channel, friend of the channel. Uh, I had a 3 p.m. meeting with him here in Toronto. I, sorry, I gotta say, secretly, I'm so pumped that I'm going on this long rant and Marcus finished eating his sausage. No, I haven't even. Oh, you haven't, e- I haven't, haven't even eaten it. Um, While bite. I'm doing the long rant, mm-hmm. he's not eating. It's the best. I forgot, sorry. So I messaged Dave and said, Dave, uh, my flight's canceled. I'm trying to get back. He's like, uh, don't worry, we can do it the next day. Mm. I'm like, no, man, this is, this is, this is it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm pumped to do this. This is the whole thing. Like, the race to get back to meet Dave. Right? Yeah, yeah. Made it so much more challenging and exciting and than, worth it. than I can get back any time and right. then sleep and then wake up tomorrow and go meet Dave. Like, what? No, don't don't take the easy way out. So you did it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's the greatest birthday of all time, right? Because I, I proved to myself that I can do it. I'm proud of myself for my actions. I wouldn't be proud if I said... Yeah, let's meet tomorrow. It's okay. I'm not going to make it. I'm driving overnight from New York. Like this became a story, not even so much a story to tell you, but a, a story that reaffirmed to myself <laughs> how of how awesome amazing I are. feel that I am to myself. Right? Right. Whether so, people hate that or love that, it so doesn't matter. Your resting place. I I, I know this. I, I was thinking about it all weekend. Your resting place is one of extreme optimism. And my resting place. But I've cultivated it. Okay. Yeah. Did cultivated. you used to be a, a pessimist? I wouldn't say I was a pessimist, but um, it wasn't. Ex- it wasn't this. This is crazy. I, I know. I'm at dinner last night with someone, and they're busy saying like, "I think Evan has gone to a whole new level of of insane optimism." And Who was that? 
<laughs> should, I, should I rat them out? Yeah, of course. <laughs> we'll talk after. Come on. <laughs> all right. While you're busy doing all this stuff to proving to yourself how awesome you are, I'm just like falling deeper and deeper and deeper into like depression. I am like, like there's this line out of this song where um, where they just say like, uh, well, there's swear words, but they basically just say, "I'm such a loser." And it's like just this rap, it's like this part of this rap song, and I'm just like, I am such a loser, like, like, the and it's and it's just going, and, and I haven't I haven't been there, and I was telling you like I haven't been depressed since September, and and I was like, okay. I can feel it, I can feel it happening, okay, like, so, so I'm gonna fight it, I'm gonna fight it, I'm gonna be better than this. So so but, we're here now, it's Thursday, we're a day and a half in. This is like yeah. our lunch break. We're actually a day and a half in. Yeah. How are you feeling now? Um. Yeah. Uh, how do I feel now? Mm-hmm. I I feel like I'm still not fully committed to it. Like I, I think my threshold, like, like yeah, but how's your listen, mood? How's your mood? I, well, I think I crushed it on camera for you guys, but I, I don't think like I actually pushed myself out of my comfort zone. Okay, I think your, I said, what's your mood? You said you're depressed on Monday. Now it's Thursday. What's your mood? Um, my mood is worried that I'm not committed enough to this. Are you depressed? Uh, not right now. <laughs> How'd that happen? Uh, I don't. I don't think I actually have depression, like from a clinical point of view. So oh my me, god! Stop what? hedging. I'm not hedging. I'm How'd just that saying, happen? Like, you were almost depressed on Monday. You're not depressed now. How did that happen? Because we're doing this, and this is fun. But it exactly. doesn't mean it doesn't mean in an hour or two I won't be back to like. So what do you need man. to do, Mark? <laughs> do you want me to pull up the the text you send me where you just say like progress, push forward, or whatever it is you say? No, like. So, I, listen, I, keeping myself busy is a great distraction. Yes. No, that's not it. This isn't just busy. Okay. This isn't just busy. You're around people mm-hmm. who are, whether it's like the ambition, podcast is also trying to get better. Therapy hour with Mark. <laughs> podcast, me, um, or even just the, the vulnerability, like the stories from this morning that you were in downstairs. All of that makes you feel better. Makes you heal. Mm-hmm. That's what you need. And you spend more time with more people. No, you need to design that for yourself. You don't have that. And so you fall into quasi-depression, whether it's clinical or not. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That's why I end up being now crazy. Because I've cultivated so much of it that it just becomes. So that's what you need to do. Cultivate more of this. Be it, Collect good people. Collect people who lift you from depression. Your stepfather puts you in depression. Awesome. Now we're going to collect people who lift me from it. And that's what I want to do. And that's what you need to do. Because it already works. And so just be consistent. And you won't be depressed. There we go. (laughs) I'm working through this. I'm working through this. Let's, uh, we have four questions. Uh, We have... Because uh, this is a tight five, we have another seven minutes for this podcast. So let's go ahead and hit a few listener questions from Instagram. Remember, you can always email us questions at markdrager.com. We we did get our first. Uh, oh, we did get our first really uh, qu- question topic slash request. What was that to join us? I don't have it pulled up right now. Are you kidding me? The first one we don't even recognize and give them. Hey, hey, hey! No, no, fine. I will recognize it. I'll bring it up, but, but, but it's an actual topic. It's an actual episode, and I wanted to make sure that I arrange it at a time where we could spend an hour on it. Okay. So, okay, 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 go, go. We got like we're perfect. Coming. Pick one. Uh, what do you feel? What is your biggest fear? If I had to pick like a like a emotional fear, it, it's out of control. Being out of control, heights, not being in control of my body. Um, if I have to pick like a, a, a mental fear, it's uh, living with regret, hmm. like being 95 and and 95 uh, year old Evan is disappointed. Like the person that Evan could have been is disappointed with the person who he is. Hmm. Those are good. Yeah. One of my biggest fears is that something, um, uh, an accident will happen to one of my kids. Oh man, that's crazy. So I'm I'm like a really visual person. Like you think I, about that all the time. Really, all the time. Like they that's can be wild. out in the front yard playing, and if a soccer ball runs past the sidewalk, uh, not freak out. I I I really can picture. Like I can just so clearly visualize. I'm like a really visual person in my memory, if, or in my mind. If I close my eyes, 
I can I can picture a car swerving off of the thing, and it, like it doesn't help that two months ago my daughter was almost hit by a truck that mm. left the road and got out of control and stuff. But but all of those things, you know, if we're chopping something and there's a knife sitting on the t- on the counter, I can picture the knife slipping off the counter and falling wow. into some like it's very dark, dude. <laughs> Picture the knife falling off and like stabbing my. So I'm proactively moving stuff around and like keeping stuff safe and warning my kids like, hey, don't try to climb on top of a fence and balance because you might break your neck and like just like I can just picture all these things. So so one of my fears, my kids will hurt themselves in a non healthy way. I actually like them, you know, like falling out of a tree and breaking an arm or something because I feel like that's like diversity and healthy. But I'm talking about like really like like scarring or 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 things like that. Can I tell you something funny? Sure, you're gonna like it. Yeah, well, I really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I was, I was, uh, I don't know how old I was, kid, and uh, I was climbing a tree, and there's this neighbor who's like this super introverted neighbor who I've never really talked to. Just like I feel like this story is long enough, I can take a bite. When you when when you walk by, you say hi, 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 hi. Like never mm-hmm. ever had a real conversation, and then I'm in a tree, and then he yells out at me from across his house. He's like. Evan, I'm like, don't hurt yourself in that tree. I'm like, you are a pillar of our community. <laughs> and wow. like, wow, this is amazing. Like, I never talked to this guy. I'm, I'm, I'm not super kid. I'm probably in my like early, early teens. But it, it left a memory, right? I choose to remember the good stuff. He is a reframer, everyone. Posh Notions is in the house. I'm wearing your shirt. Yeah, Posh, I hope you know that I'm wearing your shirt. Yeah, and I've talked about you a yeah. lot, and I did it. I wore it specifically today because I knew we'd be recording yeah. our foundational stories. It's on and there, I, and I wanted this on camera. It's on there. Uh, Posh Notions. We got to make We got to head out. Okay. Last question. Are you doing your workshop again after this one? Maybe. Every time I do it, I'm like, this still, is the last time we're doing minutes. it. We still got two minutes. No, but I need to. We need to wrap up to get to the next thing, next yeah, part of the event. Don't worry. No, no. The event starts in four minutes. We got two minutes. Uh, every time I do it, I feel like it's the last. Going in, I'm like, this is the last time I'm going to do it. It's three days. It's crazy. It's it's my whole team. You know, it's just like it's it's too much work. Um, but then coming out of it, it's like, oh my god! Like Mark hasn't even experienced the whole thing. Tomorrow night dinner is going to be insane. And and then it's like, how can I not do this again? It's crazy. So I don't know. We'll see. Right now, I'm thinking probably not. But by the end of tomorrow, we'll see. Awesome. Final question from. Uh Amer Vibbononano. That's my best take of that. I'm sorry. What is your biggest dream or goal, and what are your plans to get it done? To solve the world's biggest problem, untap human potential, and uh, wake up every day taking a drop from the ocean. What does that mean? I've never even heard that one before. Really? Every day taking a drop from the ocean? Yeah. I thought I thought your dream is to swim forever. That's it too. Oh, okay. But it's like it's impossible. It's an impossible thing. You're never gonna empty the oceans. The starfish on the beach, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know that one? No. You don't know that one? No. Oh, it's like there's this big tsunami and like the 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 tsunami washed up all the starfish on the beach. Mm-hmm. And it's like a million starfish on the beach. Mm-hmm. And there's this kid who's like throwing oh, starfish back, them in. back and he yeah, yeah, says, yeah. yeah, this is useless. Why would you do it? And yeah, yeah. At least I'm saving these ones. That's it. I think I think that should be everybody's ambition. To have something impossible that will never happen, and then mm-hmm. to get up every day and make a small piece of that happen. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Yeah. My uh, biggest dream or goal... Gosh, they're, they're going to sound so material. Oh, my God. Stop judging <laughs> yourself. And, Jesus Christ, Mark. I said I want to solve the world's biggest problem, and you're sitting here... Th- Jesus, this is unbelievable. Because you don't even like it. I shared with you my dreams and goals, and, and they're all about the type of family uh, it I want to have. It doesn't matter if I like I it. You need to like it. Stop judging and saying, this is going to sound better. No, this is what I want. I'm Mark, Great. Dragosaurus Draker, Great. and this is what I want. Okay, Go. I want 5,000 acres. 5,000 acre property. You want cows? Hmm? cows? No. No? I just I want, I want a property that's so large that it, it's a lot of work to get there, and then I want to bring people there. Oh, am I headed? Uh, yeah, for sure. Helicopter? Uh, okay. Horses? Sure. Are there horses? In this dream, no, but oh. there could be. There are ATVs. No animals? You have no animals? No. A lot of motorized vehicles. Oh, motorized. <laughs> okay. Right. But I want some place that is so big that it takes that it's an effort to get there, and it's a destination, and then you build it like compound style for people, for life, for kids, for grandkids, for like... I love the dream 
I said this to my wife when we bought our house. I know we're almost out of time, but when we bought our house, we bought our house at like the age of 31 saying we wanted our grandkids to say, oh, that's our grandparents' house. Like, like that's, that's what I want to be able to pass down and establish, like just this environment of togetherness. Great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us for this tight five. As always, uh, rock on. If you want to see the last episode of my podcast with Mark, it's fire. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.